Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audiblepodcast.com slash Sorgatron Media. Over 75,000 titles to choose from for your iPod, iPhone, or MP3 player. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Hey guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show, we're back this week. What's, it's uh, what number are we on? It's 278, yeah. sir. Wrestling Mayhem Show 278, Hand Banana. Hand Banana. That's right. We're back again with us you. again in the studio, DJ Lunchbox. <laughs> ah, hey, what's up, hot dog? This is DJ Lunchbox coming to you live from Sorgatron Studios. That's right. I fought and killed 300 men to be here tonight, so you better fucking appreciate it. Tonight. You. I want to be called Spaghetti. <laughs> and then Spaghetti is Chachi. How you doing tonight? Hi. This is Spaghetti right uh, next to me. That's right. That's right. And on, tonight, the, on the interwebs, you. three blocks away, just because right. we ran out of couch room, AJ. <laughs> Hi, AJ. What's going on? You could have sat in a recliner. Wrestling. We don't but, have... Hey, oh, hey, what, huh? You could have sat in a recliner. Here, I could probably throw a football and hit your house. Because <laughs> uh, I could throw a football sorry, three city blocks. So three of them. Wow. Three of them. Wow. Three of them. It's kind of a hill. He's an all star. All right. That's kind of a hill. That's he cool. could play for the Pittsburgh Power. He could play for the Pittsburgh Power. 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 I, could throw, I could play for the Pittsburgh Power if they wanted me to throw the ball from the field to Heinz Field. <laughs> I could do that. I'd like to see that. I would like. Sorg, I forgot, and I, 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 I don't know if you're going to put it on gold or in this, but about my message for AJ. I thought it was for this. Is it for this? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, we should, oh, of course, or, uh, introduce our glorious host. Our host body, Sorgatron. Hey. Hi, Sorg. Yes. Hi. Hi, Sorg. That's me. How are show, you? The show does not that happen without Sorgatron. How are you? It would be very difficult without How me. are you? I- I'm fine. I'm good. good. I'm good, sir. Good. I'm good. I'm ready hey. to get in some mayhem. Guess what? What's up? That's all the people we have on the show this that week. That is all the people we have <laughs> on the show uh, this week so far. <laughs> intros yes. took... Uh, this screen and that screen and that screen no. over there are yes. uh, not... Uh, intros yes. took a whole They're five busy. minutes this week. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, WrestleFan's been Future Endeavored and Mad Mike, uh, I think it's his birthday <laughs> celebration. That he's doing. So happy birthday, Mad Mike! Well done. Yes. Happy, well done. happy You've survived birthday. another year. You're without getting still stabbed alive. <laughs> Congratulations! You have died. That's right. There's gonna be a lot of singing on this week's Mayhem show. I can tell. Oh damn! Uh, right. I would just like I'm to point out um, earlier during Awesome Cast. Riz said that we stole the Wrestling Mayhem show gimmick when AJ started singing uh, "Arms of an Angel" <laughs> and we started collecting money for Nebraska. Yeah, that is not yeah, yeah. true. No? Um, no, we didn't collect a thing for Nebraska. Right. <laughs> because no one wanted to donate. <laughs> no, because <laughs> Nebraska is filled with nothing but corn. So, like that just corn and not even like the band, a shitload of people without awful. internet. So, yes, we tried to raise money for Nebraska. It didn't work. It failed because nobody likes it. Right. Moving on. Moving on. Moving nobody on. Likes it. I, do have a, I do have a message for AJ. AJ, yes, sir. my friend. Yes, sir. I owe you an apology. Oh, wow. Hold on. Let me... Uh, <laughs> Let Holy me sh- lean in for this one. I, 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 owe you, I owe you a sincere apology. I was at the Yins team game uh, uh, on uh, on Friday. this past Friday, and uh, it occurred to me that I've only met you in real life once before. Yes. Once before. And initially at the game, and this is what I'm apologizing for, I did not recognize you immediately. That's fair. So I've I'm, gotten um, fatter and skinnier since then. I yes. see. Excellent. <laughs> what? Yeah. I, yeah, I, had, I, had, I had met young AJ here once before in real life, and I think it was like two years ago at a pod camp. So, yeah. Here's uh, my apology to you is thus <clears throat> Do you really want to hurt me? Do you really want to make me cry? And I'm going to stop you there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably for the best because the next line is "precious kisses" and that doesn't apply. So there we go. Apology accepted. Aces <laughs> singing, uh, singing enjoyed. Fantastic. That was a and great I, way. And I promise next time I, I'll recognize you when we're in Greensburg. So that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'd hope so. Yeah, considering you're it's, sitting. Hey, by the way, uh, for those of you who don't follow us on Twitter, and shame, a shame and a pox upon you. Yes, because we have fun on Twitter. Oh boy, do we? Uh, uh, 
Bobby F. Uh, uh, Bob, or what was it? Ro- Franklin Delano Jamestown. <laughs> uh, <laughs> myself. Lunchbox and Riz uh, will be in Greensburg watching Money in the Bank because, yes. um, well, we don't care about buy rates, so <laughs> <laughs> watch it there. <laughs> we're going to go hang out with each other and make and uh, just enjoy what CM Punk and uh, John Cena and friends will do. And, and yes. I do hope Rock to join you if, I, if, if it turns out that I'm not working that evening. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's like a 50 because people rate. stink at scheduling. People do stink at scheduling. Uh, hey, hey, freelance is for real, but you know what else is for real? Scheduling. We have calendars. Gregorian, <laughs> Eastern Orthodox. I don't care what they are. Schedule. Oh, he wow. dropped some Gregorian wow. shit on you. Holy Gregorian, that, man. Hey, holy holy Gregorian. Gregorian. You chisel that into the motherfucking sundial if you have to. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, you know what? Let's chisel out some emails because you know how you can get out get to us, guys. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can call us at 412-206-WMS0-96704 for the rest of you. Uh, you can also hit us up at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Twitter us at MayhemShow on the Twitter dial. What? Twitter dial. There's a, there's a Twitter, dial. Twitter uh, dial. Please look us up on, on iTunes, on Blip TV, MediaFly, on the Twitter and YouTube. Dial. Please leave comments, rate us everything. Let us know if we suck. Don't just talk, walk away, delete us, and 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 go quietly in the night. Yes. Let us know. Leave Let us comment. know why we suck. Let us know. Give us some yeah. creative criticism about what's going on here yes. and why. If you'd it's not. like to tell me, a guy who's only sort of kind of on the show from time to time, that I suck, do it. I still listen <laughs> when I'm not on this show. Shit. So tell me I that I'm my awful. Microphone. If I'm being awful, <laughs> just that's right. That's right. You know. Just like AJ when he emails us. And tells us we suck. And tells us. <laughs> or when he uh, tells us listens, you suck. listens to the show and hashtags it with you suck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can do that as well. You can hashtag the show. Uh, you can uh, at Mayhem Show. Tell us why. And then hashtag you suck. Yes. Well, that works too. So Yeah. Yeah, we suck. We get it. Yeah. Moving on. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. I mean, we are going to play with some stuff here. Uh, if it works out, we're going <laughs> to try Google Hangout. If you haven't, mm-hmm. uh, go go encircle us on your Google Plus if you're fortunate enough to be in there. We're going to yep. do a Mayhem show uh, 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 hangout uh, during the show, between the show. We'll see how it works. We've, Again, uh, Sorgatron Media on on the hangout, and we'll we'll, we'll see how that how that goes. Right. We've yeah. Moved. We uh yeah. we did this last night with uh, Raw, and it was one of the more enjoyable times I've ever had watching wrestling. Uh, just sitting there and <laughs> laughing along with someone mm-hmm. at how ridiculous some of the things are. Yeah. I I'll... mean, watching people mark out is kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, which we did. Uh, whenever uh, our uh, our new illustrious leader CM Punk mentioned WWE ice cream bars, oh, yeah. <laughs> that shit was trending internationally we, on Twitter last night. That was. Yeah, yeah. We all, all of us were like, yeah, and we're just sitting on our couches watching TV, which is interesting. Not doing if you've show. ever, if you've ever skyped or anything, uh, we used to do this with like Vlog TV or something. Like you would always see, like the, even if everybody's watching on TV, there's different delays depending on what they're watching it on yeah. whether it be yeah. satellite or cable or, or whatever other method <clears throat> um and, and so that kind of like the oh somebody reacted oh i'm waiting for it oh my god there it is you know and that like kind of <laughs> yeah. goes through the crew you know yeah but, it uh, was also fun uh making fun of wrestle fan uh, at a far more uh primal level <laughs> like it's a two on this show um without limitations I was making fun of his memory <laughs> By memory, I mean that shit he watched on YouTube like last week. Yeah, because he was like, "Oh, I remember when that happened." We were like, "No, you were like five. You watched it on YouTube." And, yeah, and, you and watched AJ it on YouTube. Your remember YouTube. box is YouTube, not your actual memory. <laughs> like you don't remember any of these people. You just watched them last week because one of us mentioned him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so that worked out pretty good. I think we're going to try it again next week, and and we're going to try to experiment with things on the show with it. You you're really chomping on a bit to to read this email here. Uh, oh, Josh. I was just you, keeping I it. See, you keep I was keeping it, it fresh. By the way, I, I wanted to allude right to uh, the email that AJ sent us. Um, but he can read it himself. Yeah, I can't actually because I can't see the uh, rest of it. Ooh, okay. Dibs. Okay. Dibs. Oh, that's right. You do. Dibs. You, you have the email. Okay. I'll I just read had it. Copy it over. Okay. You're hiding behind your laptop. I don't know how visually appealing this is. Well, I th- oh, I th- I'm sorry. I thought Chachi was going first while I find this thing from AJ. Fine. Let, let Chachi go first. 
Do you, do you want me to go first? Why yeah. not? Okay. Yeah, do it. No, I was just trying to stay comfy and not yawn. Because I am interested, and my phone has a screen timeout, and I was trying to keep it fresh. <laughs> so. Okay. Thanks for all that explanation. It wasn't how's anticipation. The e- how's, how's the email? How about you, I uh, <laughs> kiss my ass? All right. WMS! <laughs> You have a hard on for his email, he says. <laughs> it makes me feel like I have a purpose each week. <laughs> That's right. CM Punk, 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 CM Punk. Did I mention CM Punk? Nope. Uh, this whole month of Punk has been one of the best months in wrestling this year. However, there's something about WWE's promotion of CM Punk's final days that makes you think. One, the start of the hype of Money in the Bank pay-per-view hunt started with his promo with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold, Stone Cold, Stone Cold. Two, his much-publicized rant on John Cena on Monday Night Raw featured CM Punk in a Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt. Nobody mentioned that either. Nobody, like, really talked about that. Yeah, no one paid attention to the fact that he just showed up wearing an Austin shirt. We did. I, well, I yeah, remember we listening. Because yeah, yeah. I wasn't on that show, but I, I remember listening to that going, he was in a Stone Cold <laughs> shirt, and you guys made mention of it, and uh, then I went back and watched it again, and I was like, oh, he was not a Stone yeah, Cold we, shirt. Well, I mean, uh, Franklin Delano it. Johnstown uh, did mention it on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and number three, not sure if you caught the WWE intro, but it stopped abruptly due to CM Punk's promo. Who's part of the intro that they stop at in midline? Stone Cold Steve Austin's, of course. See where I'm getting at? Until next time, I think I forgot to mention CM Punk, Riz. <laughs> Man, doesn't that kind of make you think, like, maybe he's leaving just to pop up right before WrestleMania to take on Stone Cold? That could be That would be a hell of a match and a hell of a promo lead-in. Yeah. There's been a hell of a lot of just you, little things. Don't you think it would have the same effect as... uh John Cena fighting The Rock, though? <laughs> kind of like it should have happened five years ago? No, because Cena no. wasn't near big enough. I mean, Cena in the last two years was big enough to do this. I'm not, and he's I'm still... not necessarily meaning John Cena. I'm just mentioning... I mean, people... new Like current wrestler yeah. versus previous wrestler? Right. Yeah. Now, I think that Stone Cold and The Rock are still... Are still young... Or they're still... And, and I'm using quotes here. Young enough... <laughs> To do it, I don't want to see Sting wrestle The Undertaker. That's Both true. guys are really at the end of their rope. Can I? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, oh, never mind. We'll ahead. cover it later. I'm sorry. We'll cover it later. Okay. I, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. That's fine. <laughs> I, I have a. I wanted to talk about Sting. Remind me to talk about Sting. <laughs> um, you said five years ago, John Cena was not big enough for a match like no, that. It's punk. I'm oh, punk. punk. Oh, I thought you said John Cena. Because no. five years ago, John Cena was constantly feuding with Edge, and we, he had that classic match against Rob Van Dam at One Night Stand. That's right. That is where John Cena was uh, five years ago. So, wow. No wonder we're so bored. Yeah. So. It's been five straight years of G- of John Cena as champion. That's longer mm-hmm. than Hogan had a run. Yeah. Like, that big run of Hogan's, mm-hmm. and he had the belt the whole time. Wow. Yeah, but so, yeah. not. Cena went a very... A relatively long time without the belt. I believe yeah. it was last year. Yeah. Yes, he did. Because, I mean, and I'm using the term relative because guys don't hold the belt for a year at a time anymore. They hold it for, you know, three pay-per-views, and then they switch it because they have to keep people's attention. And that's <laughs> the, that is now the era that we live in. People don't want to see... Uh, you know, a guy like John Cena hold the belt for six months, eight months at a time. They want to see him hold it for like three pay per views and then lose it, and then get back into that whole like I'm in the hunt for the title. Type yeah, because that that's when he gets more interesting and more driven as the in the hunt. I gotta have it thing. It's so. probably worth mentioning that uh, five years ago, where CM Punk was was one of the gangsters on John Cena's car at WrestleMania. So not ready for Stone Cold. Uh, <laughs> no, not, exactly. not not quite yet. So, and it's been great references to that too. So, hey, what, you you got AJ's email there? You know, I don't. <laughs> I do. I don't know. AJ has it. I've met Mike's email. All right, AJ, what'd you say? I said 
I couldn't see the video of Angry Grandpa, but honestly, I just thought it was Lunchbox shouting about TNA. <laughs> <laughs> and that's absolutely true. Like, I was, I just, all I heard was, you know what, TNA, I'm just <laughs> sick of you. And I just thought it was Lunchbox just yelling things like, look at my dick. Sounds about like, right. <laughs> <laughs> so that sounds about right. It's the same I thing. Know, it was I don't think I've ever. Yeah, it was like, look at TNA and how stupid it is. <laughs> oh, TNA man. looks just like my dick. <laughs> I, I've never heard AJ say, look at my dick, and he did it perfectly, <laughs> and it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Of course I did. <laughs> well, it's not an easy phrase to pick up. Look at my dick! I mean, it, it's got some nuances. <laughs> there's, it some, there's, some hick, there's some hick to it. Yeah. There's some throat contraction. I mean, I've been practicing it a lot of years. Yeah. You know, it's... it's there's uh, definitely a lot of Green County in that. A lot of yes. Green County in that, and that is... Uh, that, that's That's all organic. Uh-huh. So it's uh-huh. it's I've been saying that probably about as as many years as I've been saying, uh, boy, now I get off my desk, get off my roof, and get my scatter gun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go and get my get my scatter gun, make you go out in the woods and pick up sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> boy, better get off that roof. Now. Wow. Get off that roof. Wow. Wow. No, basically, it just reminds us that some people do listen to the, just the audio. So when we yeah. start showing videos, like that, ready, <laughs> ready, steady, uh, to me. Yeah, well, I'm listening yeah. to just the audio. That's okay. You're, you're using the app too, aren't you? Uh, I use the app. Uh, I do subscribe via iTunes, so oh, I can man. listen to it on my work laptop because uh, my work laptop is what I plug my headphones into at work. So I listen to it through there, but I listen to gold. Uh, through the phone. So nice, uh, nice. What's all right, up? what's up? Uh, I'm gonna read this voicemail. <laughs> what? Oh, sweet. Wait, did we get a voicemail? Yes, there's a voicemail. Where? It was uh, at 4:24 p.m. Voicemail at wrestlermayhemshow.com. It's from a 330 number, but I'm gonna read it to you because the Google Translate completely jacked it up, and it makes absolutely no sense. Okay. <laughs> Which is the best? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can listen to the voicemail later and see what the person was actually trying to say. I'm and right uh, I'm right 330, by the way, is Northeast Ohio, for those of you who are wondering. I do okay. believe this is usually a big freak. Okay, so let's talk about everybody's favorite talking of the topic of the like C on it. I only one who's the British wrestlers. I came out the Jones double rooms and thought, FJK, sir, 0506, and hey... Bed like you're the stickler for detail of L.A. yet. (laughs) (laughs) He's not wrong so far. (laughs) No, 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 no. Did the Kelty (laughs) it to you later? Logic took place. Finger, Yen, Tuffin, and Suicide. There, dear. My point, perfect, perfectly logical. Hey, it's cool. I've taken a bit, but... (laughs) <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. it. Okay, I, I'm, I'm still working on getting that loaded up on a computer. We can hear it. Uh, but, uh, I had to read it because it's always funny. Always, always. I'm gonna try and uh, I'm gonna try Bobby's British accent. <laughs> Hepat. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hepatitis. 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 Oh, I'll go a little bit of a clap. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little bit of gonorrhea. <laughs> a little bit of clap. Speaking of gonorrhea, did it you is. hear there's a new strain? What? Yeah, it's like there's super, a new strain super, of gonorrhea. Super gonorrhea. Yeah, it's super yeah. gonorrhea. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. No way. Yeah. No, so it's, well, it's imagine. A... Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Imagine the human torch, but it's your dick. <laughs> Whoa! Just throwing this out there, kids. This is a public service announcement from your friends of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. <laughs> Wrap it up. Keep your dick out of harm's way. <laughs> Don't be true. a fool. You know, Wrap most, your tool. The most important thing I ever learned from Ron Jeremy <laughs> was wash your dick in the sink. Are you done fucking? Are you done? She'll still be there. Go wash your dick in the sink. All right, I do have the voicemail in question. <laughs> Whoever it may have come from. But we have to listen to it after that. Okay, go. So, let's talk about everybody's favorite topic as of, like, TNA. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm the only one who's the uh, British wrestler that came out to challenge Doug Williams and thought SJK circa 0506. Wow, that was dead on. It was. <laughs> uh, Kudos, and Google. hey, man, like, you're the stickler for detail and logic. 
Who is? Me? The, Mad Mike. Mad Mike? How T- TNA's logic to explain Sangriento and, and uh, suicide there. No, that's his phone. Are you sure? Because yes. Google Voice has been wonky for some people. No, that's his phone, Maybe and Google phone. Google got that shit right on. But because again, it was only those words that you could hear. Okay, aside from Google getting right right on, he did mention about how we had suicide. Uh, I think he was trying to say suicide. Uh, um, uh, what's the uh, hot and spicy guy? Uh, help me out. Curry Man. Curry Man and another character that I believe was Christopher Daniels all signing autographs at the same time. That was pretty nice. Okay. There was a lot of kind of uh, nice nods for that for, on Destination X, which I think was a great pay-per-view, by the way. I saw By the way, if any of you yet. looked over Sword Shoulder and saw my camera, uh, that was my dog looking for the point of that email. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like you got cut off. It, there's a lot of blanks in that. Um... <laughs> It sure is. But kudos, Google. Google Google's getting you, better. You got it right. We can start reading voicemails at some point. He is still here. looking. He's still looking? He's still, he's still figuring still it out. Still looking oh, for Oh, look the at that. Um, I'll do the indie minute. Okay, do that. Wait, wait, wait. We got another email. There's the Mad Mike mail. Uh, when do I ever care about the Mad Mike email? Oh. Did the Mad Mike email step on you? It, needs, it did. It has to get read. Uh, fine, you read it. All right. So you don't want it? Yeah, go for Do it. Do you want right, me well. to read it? I'll read it. I'll read I it. Care. I got it. I Howdy don't... Mayhem. Oh, it's a oh, there long it is. one. It's a long one. Holy Howdy shit. Mayhemers. It's that guy who was back from vacation, took care, spiked his hair, and is now really hoping CM Punk comes back on the air. It's mad. Goddamn Mike. Since oh. I know you all missed me last week and miss me this week, but, but I am out celebrating the birthday of my sister, Electric Erica. Oh, sister. Yes. That's but right. next week, I shall be back in full force. And now... On to wrestling! Well, I'd like to pronounce the death of TNA. We all actually <laughs> kind of liked. As after reading the spoilers, it looks like we're back to business as usual. However, Stop it with the spoilers! However, allow me to eulogize TNA by saying last week's impact was actually pretty decent. Once again, the X Division guys had an amazing match. The Sting, quote, beatdown was actually one of the worst things I've seen on television. And I've finally we- realized what the camera work during the knockouts matches reminds me of. That POV YouTube excuse me of a camera wrestling Lacey Von Eric. Can we, I, I want to stop you there. Okay. Can, can we talk about the Sting character on TNA right now? If you want. If uh, you can, I <laughs> know you can't it. get it out. Let's <laughs> do it. Explain what what's happening with Sting. Sting has gone insane. Not that he probably wasn't already there f- already he's from doing, all the isn't drugs. Isn't he doing, like, Joker makeup? Yes. Yeah, like, yes. No, it, it is Joker makeup. Whatever. Like, it's his, it's his Sting makeup <laughs> with the Joker twist and the Heath like, Ledger yeah, Joker he, attitude. He, uh, yeah, a little bit of that. I think there's a little mix between Heath Ledger, Ledger and uh, Cesar Romero, to be honest. How long are you guys going to talk about Sting? I have to take a piss because I hate Sting, mm-hmm. so I'm just going to walk well, away it, right it now. Doesn't, it doesn't get too <laughs> much better, so. Right. Yeah, no, that's it. I just wanted to bring that up. And there's, there's a picture right, of what I'll, he's doing right yeah, now. There that's, it is. That's, uh, like, yeah. it, it's, that's not necessary. It, at, at that point in time... When you've had the career that Sting has had, it's just time to hang up the boots and walk away. Okay. Okay. Like, if but you... he is doing something different. He's ripping off another major motion picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's updated his shit he's from the Crow. He's updated from the Crow to uh, Dark Knight. Yes, it's time to just quit. It's like, so... Dear Sting, can you please hang it up so we can stop talking about you? Yes, it, it's just mm-hmm. time. When you have to d- to do that, it's just time to move on. Yeah, yeah. No, nobody's really around for the timelessness of Sting. No. Although, really, was there really a timelessness when Sting used to have the blonde hair? And no. He, I mean, it, it was just... There was that no, was fake Ultimate Warrior. There was no That's timelessness true true. That's true. of anything. Yeah. He's always ripped off someone. <laughs> That's true. So he's it's a- like <laughs> He's like a more successful Virgil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
pretty good. So you know what? Can Sting like can Sting just do like a fake million dollar man, and then he can just you know sign autographs on a Buffalo Wild Wings in the middle of nowhere with a banner that says all the people he ripped off. Like oh <laughs> hey, it's Sting and the Ultimate Warrior and the Crow and the Joker, mm-hmm. and he can just have that shit hanging up, but they never show up, and it's just Sting. <laughs> so I can laugh then too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, moving on. You can go back to the boring ass email. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> oh, whoa! Granted, when <laughs> it's velvet in the ring, I don't mind as much, but I don't need to see her birth canal all the time. Really? Really? <laughs> did, did, <laughs> did you just? An, what? Is that your reaction to that's the my, comment? That's okay, my I just reaction. want to clarify. That's that's, for the audio listeners like AJ that get confused. That's all. Pop a lunchbox. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Destination X was a better than normal TNA pay per view. He walks away. He walked away from the Z mail. Chachi says, Chachi said, fuck "Fuck the Z mail. Uh, But didn't really pay too much homage to the X Division. RVD Lynn seemed five times slower than they are normally because they are older. No shit. AJ Daniels was a great match, but it felt like it meant nothing on account of. It meant nothing. nothing. Yeah. Shima's match was easily the match of the night, and the (laughs) sign them all uh, would have gotten my chance of the week if Boston of all places, hadn't proven me wrong. Now, raw. Oh, wow, is that a raw. If I wasn't already going to a Money in the Bank party, I would be buying this pay-per-view. Buying, not watching via less than legal methods, but buying. When Punk said, this is when I talk them into the building, I was already in my seat eating a pretzel, checking in on Foursquare and taking a picture of the stage. That's multitasking. Uh, John Cena, CM Punk, and Vinnie Mac should all be commended for the amazing promo work over the past three weeks. Seriously, I would buy this pay-per-view if the only match was Cena versus Punk. Hell, I thought for a second last night, Punk was going to demand a match with Steve Austin at WrestleMania. And it's odd to think, with all the amazing lines last night by Punk, Cena, and Vince, excuse me, the biggest pop was for the WWE ice cream bars. Can I mention that Colt Cabana got a chant on Raw? Yes, he did. All right. Which is awesome. So also, Luke, I want wrestling got a chant too. Yes, did it. Yes, very yeah. nice. So, um, oh yeah, other stuff happened on Raw too. Although it pairs in comparison to lines like "I can call you Phil," you may may as well be Jeter. You want to give it into terrorism? That's fine with me. It still sold the rest of the undercard extremely well. And now here's a top ten list of scenarios I think could happen at Money in the Bank in no in no order of how likely. Number ten. Cena wins clean and Punk is gone. Number nine, Vince screws over Cena and Punk signs a brand spanking new contract and the CM stands for corporate man. Number eight, Colt Cabana hops the rail and screws over Punk to get his own contract. Number seven, Cena loses to Punk and then Ray cashes in to win the championship. Number six, Punk wins the title and Vince sends both Money in the Bank winners out and they both lose. Uh, number five, Cena loses the championship, and then the lights go out, and Chris Jericho comes out as the man to save WWE. Excuse me. Number four, Punk wins and actually defends the WWE championship at an ROH event until Daniel Bryan crashes it and takes the championship back to WWE. Number three, Shima Zion, still fresh. Um, I'm sorry. Shima Zion, fresh from not winning a contract at TNA, challenges Punk to the WWE Championship after the match, wins it, and says this one is for WMS. Number two, Cena defeats Punk, then Punk destroys him, and Del Rio cashes in the Money in the Bank to win. Number one, Punk defeats Cena, makes the TNA letters with his hands, and comes out on Raw the next night and says, Psych! Well, that's it for me, guys. I'll be taking a trip to Hogwarts this week. But I shall return next week to feel you feel. feel eh. I shall return next week to fill your earballs with my awesomeness. Until then, White Alchemist ending transmortion. All right. Hot diggity daffodils. That was good. That was good. That was intense. I uh, I actually have a little bit of a boner. Do you? I do. A little bit of a boner for that one. I don't. You don't? No. I don't happen. And we have. Uh, Indie mail. Indie mail. Indie mail. Hot diggity daffodils. Where is it? There it is. Are you doing it? Yeah, I'll you read the A one report. Oh damn. It's a short time one. out. Time out. Calling time out. Why are you calling time out? Where's Sorg? <laughs> uh, Sorg had to run upstairs for a minute. So All right, then. I I was stepping in to do that. So I'm not Sorg. Mighty Morphan Sorgatron form of Chachi. So <laughs> Can we... Are we good? Yeah, I'm good now. Okay. 
I know you're confused, but I was, and I'm I'm helping the video watchers wonder what's going on because I'm also a video watcher right now. So <laughs> you're welcome, watchers of video. Okay, go. All right. There's trouble in the cartel. Hold on. Time out. Time out. Wow. What? What right. now? Go ahead. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Time in. Time in. Time in. Game, Game on. on. Game on. Uh, there's trouble in the cartel as Colin Blair cut a scathing promo against the leader of the cartel, ISP. Blair said that his family doesn't associate with low lives like ISP, and that he blames him for losing all the title shots that cartel had accumulated. They showed the two main events from Thunder Cup, the finals, in which Colin Blair defeated C4 and Black Lightning, and they showed the AON title match in which Shane Malice defeated ISP. War for Territory 4 is the next big AON event. It's AON's WrestleMania. It takes place August 20th at the Blair County Convention Center. Prior to the show will be the AON Fan Fest, where the fans get to meet all their favorite AON, AON superstars. Your ticket gets you AON's War for Territory 4, the Fan Fest, and full access to the entire two-day Man Po event. Man Po. <laughs> it sounds so filthy. It does. Hey, this, this my Man Po. <laughs> This show will be a part of the first annual Manpo, which includes a grappling tournament, Madden Bowl, video games, demonstrations, 10 plus bands, door prizes, contests, and much, much more over a two day event. Man, I love Manpo. And he sent a video. AON in action starts at 231. Zach Rain versus C4. These two are feuding now, but this match is an older match. So, there you have it. Yeah. There you have it. And Sorg is sitting on the couch. What's yes, up? He is. I'm you, on the couch. You need to speak into that gold oh, thing yeah, right yeah, there. I'm not used to this. You I don't have headset the on. I, don't, I just kind of sat down and things are happening. So, yeah. And Sorg's then, taking the evening off from running this one right now. No. He's, we're actually going to take a break and then <laughs> come what? back. I'm, I'm back. I know. But I'm back. I know. Sorg's back. I don't have anything in my headphones, though. Whoa. You oh, this sounds, re- this sounds relatively recent. Yes. Huh. What? Sork thought I was joking about... Gold. We'll be right back. <laughs> that's my keys, man. I was trying to figure out who's first. Oh, yeah, that shit's one. all full of candy. I brought candy. <laughs> you want some candy? Motherfucker, you bring candy and I'm yes, oh, way the fuck stop. up here. Like, stop. Stop. No, stop. Oh, yeah. This is how I stretch out my back. It's super great, guys. Hey, Don't look ruin, at me stretching out all these bleachers. Don't ruin this Kick. for me. The uh, Dollar General brand here going on. Yes. Cola. <laughs> Cola. Cola. What label Cola? Hey, my name's AJ. You're watching the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Show number that number. <laughs> Two seventy eight. Two seventy eight. Two seven eight. And we're bringing you back with a segment called "Hey, Remember When." <laughs> 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 now, I remember what got me into wrestling. And, and a lot of these segments that we've done on this show involve what got us into wrestling. And what got me into wrestling was watching Saturday morning WWE superstars and the ridiculous characters that were on it. And one of the first matches that I ever remember watching is Adam Bomb versus The Undertaker. And Adam Baum was apparently a wrestler who was irradiated and it made him super big because he was like a six, seven, six, eight guy. He was a pretty big guy. And The Undertaker was a pretty big guy as well. And he could turn the lights off with his hands. And when you're eight years old, that means something. So I, I wanted to go through some of the ridiculous characters that I grew up with in the early 90s, like Adam Baum, The Undertaker. The Godwins and their amazing feud with a man named Hunter Hearst Helmsley, the Blue Blood from Connecticut. You also had Paul Bearer with uh, The Undertaker, who um, still to this day kind of sort of creeps me out. And it makes me laugh harder when I found out his name was Percy. Um, Percy Pringle. Percy Pringle. Uh, You have guys like Kane. And even recently, the Boogeyman, you have these characters that are so ridiculous that you know you wouldn't find anywhere else. And you remember these guys when you're like eight years old and you have guys like the Godwins and Hunter Hearst Helmsley in a uh, 
in a hog farm match, which was effectively mud wrestling, but with dudes, so it was weird. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you have, like, matches where The Undertaker started. I remember when The Undertaker started the streak. Not like, oh, he's 14-0, and 0 and he never wrestled Triple H, even though he totally did. I remember when he started it. And he was wrestling guys that like Jake the Snake, and he was wrestling just random guys that were starting to get big. And I remember watching this as, as these ridiculous characters started to fade out in favor of guys like Owen Hart, Bret Hart, even Mister Perfect, who wasn't as a, who wasn't as ridiculous as say a guy like Adam Bomb or The Undertaker, where he was from parts unknown. He was actually Mister Perfect, and he was from Minneapolis, Minnesota. You have guys like. Uh, even Razor Ramon wasn't a terribly ridiculous character. He was from Miami, and he was still like, you know, that whole Scarface character. But he wasn't completely ridiculous. He was still a guy, and he was still from a city and not from parts unknown or had some ridiculous story where he was irradiated or he was the phenom from, you know, he came back from the dead or he was a demon from hell. He was actually like a guy who apparently could fight and then you had stories like uh, Sean Waltman, who at the time was the one, two, three kid who made it as a, as a jobber and pinned Razor Ramon and had a great feud with Razor Ramon and built himself up as a legitimate wrestler. These are the sorts of feuds that got me hooked into wrestling. And now, now you have guys like Randy Orton and John Cena, and they now make <clears throat> references to their lineage. That Randy Orton was the son of Cowboy Bob Orton. And you have guys like Cody Rhodes, who was the son of Dusty Rhodes. And Ted DiBiase was the son of Ted DiBiase. <laughs> and, you know, you get guys that they, they've transitioned from this ridiculous character to now real people. Because people want that reality. People want to know. And that's what made things like CM Punk's contract negotiation last night so real. And that's what made things like Stone Cold Steve Austin's feud with Vince McMahon for however many years it lasted that made it so real to people that people didn't want to turn away because they were like, you know what? My boss sucks, too. And I wanted to tell him to go to go blow it out his ears. And I have wanted to punch him in the face and I've wanted to kick him in the stomach, but I never had the chance to because I didn't want to get fired or arrested. And it was people or arrested. <laughs> so people had the ability to live through this. And that's what really brought wrestling around is when i'm eight years old i'm watching it for this whole like superhero level of of character and then as i grew up i was like man i hate that guy too and i'd love to punch him in the face so you got to you had harvey whippleman who was the manager of the giant gonzalez and for those of you who don't remember harvey whippleman uh and managers in general um which is really sad to me that people don't remember what uh what managers are uh, he effectively was like the guy who found the giant Gonzalez and brought him in. And, uh, I, I think that there are people like myself who watch wrestling and want that sort of thing. They want to see people who are managers. They want to see valets. They want to see guys like Bobby, the brain Heenan. And they want to see guys like Harvey Whippleman and Jim Cornette and these guys who were managers. And they were like the, you know, the evil mind behind all of these things. And I don't think that that fits anymore. Uh, you get guys like CM Punk who are now regarded as like a tactician heel where they're like, oh, I'm thinking one step ahead of good guy and the good guy has to keep up guys like and that's how they pushed Wade Barrett where he was always he always seemed to be one step ahead and CM Punk was one step ahead and the Miz was one step ahead. That's that used to be the manager's position to do those sorts of things. And the wrestler was just like, oh, that's why I hired you, Bobby the Brain Heenan, to be the brain of the operation. And then you just had guys who, like Andre the Giant, who was Bobby the Brain Heenan's guy during WrestleMania 3, that, you know, he was just the brawn and he, he followed Bobby the Brain Heenan's lead. And usually it always led to a good turn. Uh, of the of the, the 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 guy turning on the manager, and these were the sorts of storylines that we grew up with that don't exist now, and we want them back, but I don't think it fits anymore. It doesn't fit in the storyline. Kids aren't going to buy merchandise because Bobby the Brain Heenan tells them to. They're not going to follow that storyline. They want reality. They want 
they want that the WWE wants it to be real now. They want it to kind of blur that line. And uh and that's what I remember uh about wrestling and when I grew up. And that doesn't seem to exist anymore. And uh while it makes me sad, it makes me kind of reminisce and remember a, a fonder time. And I think I remember it because it was my childhood. It was when I was eight years old and not the Attitude Era. You know, I, I didn't I grew up during the Attitude Era and that was a, a prime period of my wrestling viewing uh, time. But Saturday mornings right after uh, cartoons and Beekman's World was uh WWE or WWF superstars, and I didn't get to see guys like Hogan. Hogan was never on superstars. Nope. It's just like superstars now, where they have the opening and it has like all these superstars, and I just refer to it as the opening of guys who will not be appearing on this show tonight. Because <laughs> that's what it is. You don't see guys like The Undertaker on superstars. They're not on there. You get guys like Zack Ryder, and I'm sure that there is some kid. Because they used uh, up until recently, they were showing superstars on Saturday morning. There's some kid who grew up watching, who's going to grow up and, rem- and reminisce and say, "Man, I remember watching Zack Ryder and Primo <laughs> Cologne, and I remember watching Chris <laughs> Masters, and I and yeah. these that's going to be their mm-hmm. their thing." Because the Undertaker was Zack Ryder 18 years ago. Whoa, whoa! Think about that. Hogan wasn't on there. Andre the Giant wasn't on there. Jim Cornette wasn't on there. It was Paul Bearer and The Undertaker on Superstars. Just ripping through jobbers. To be, to be fair, Bret Hart did a lot of the same thing. I remember him def- yeah. defending titles against uh, the Brooklyn Brawler. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. had Because that's when you had real jobber matches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Bret Hart, I never got a pair of purple sh- or pink shades, and I'm still mad about that. <laughs> that's all I wanted. All anybody but that's, wanted. but that is that. This will this will wrap up a segment that we like to call "Hey, remember when?" <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, AJ. That was tremendous. Yeah, it was. That was yeah, the best one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. I, although I, I, you put I, way I, more thought and preparation into that than any of what else. I, I uh, by the way, I uh, uh, my preparation for this was me typing a bunch of names <laughs> uh, in in Notepad and then just going off the top of my head. Yeah, I forgot to watch the. Uh, the the thing that I wanted that I did for remember when <laughs> what the hell? What, what was that again I I don't know oh That's how but I, I think this is that. this is this is why shows like superstars exist mm-hmm. because they give guys who who aren't in real storylines a chance to get on TV um. Which sadly doesn't exist anymore because I think WGN canceled their contract for superstars. Uh, it, it, it does. Be- it does exist online only right now. Right. So I mean, it's still there. This interesting move to to internet, which kind of goes to you know some of the stuff we were talking about earlier today in the awesome cast. I think about them kind of changing things up and what that. I, I'd like to see them just put it on Saturday mornings. Yeah. Like, but yeah. they need to put it on a channel because I think superstars was on. I want to see superstars in Erie had it. It was on like, it was on right after cartoons. Like it was legitimately on a cartoon channel. I think it was on MDC. Hmm. It like was local- um, yeah. superstars was syndicated because for me yeah. it was the ABC channel out of Youngstown, and I'm sure it was yeah. different for everybody. I think it might have been on either. I think it was on Fox for me. Actually. Fox for you. I, I know. Think. I know. For me, it was uh, superstars was actually Sunday after church programming. And then eventually, sometimes I found a wrestling challenge on uh, on Saturdays after, yeah, again, after cartoons, like mm. maybe like 11, 12 o'clock. So. But it was just an extension of those characters. You had guys who were in these cartoons that were literally, and to use the phrase literally here, they were cartoonish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, big you know, time. It was just a logical oh. extension, but instead of the guys being drawn, they were real. And these guys were getting beat up. And I can't, I cannot tell you how distraught I was when I found out the wrestling wasn't real. Yeah, yeah. And I was, was just like, a, that was oh. an argument. But I found out when I was like twelve, and I was just like, oh. That was about it. It was like it was wrestling and Santa Claus, right? I, I made it that was argument with Santa Claus. For a long is there time. is there any difference between the Santa Claus, who's real by the way, and wrestling? I mean, but although although your parents didn't always support the fact of wrestling, <laughs> um, that was thankfully a- uh, my mom and my dad uh, learned to, that this was something that I liked, and I got my brother into it. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, to this day, my mom will still say she gets the emails for like console energy center. Yeah. And she'll say, Oh, Hey, Ross coming. Do you want to go to that with your brother? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> like, I sure like, do. Like, well, things changed. They, I mean, um, it's, it's, she knows that that's something that my brother and I, I mean, to this, just to take it back, my brother and I used to watch WCW Monday Nitro together and we threw our own Nitro parties. Nice. Yeah. And hoped that at some point Season we would two. get picked and they were going to put like our Nitro party on TV. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was the, that was like the first, I think that was really the first that like any wrestling promotion reached out to their fans and said, we want to make you a part of this. Yeah. Before social networking, before social media, before Twitter and online polls and live wire and all that stuff. It was literally them saying, hey, send us a video of your party that you have when you watch our programming and we'll put it on TV and we'll send the Nitro girls out to hang out with you. <laughs> like that was the original social networking. And it's like, that hey, crap was real. It's like, hey, we were teenagers. We wanted the Nitro girls to hang out with us. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I have a vague recollection of, and I'm gasping because I'm finding stuff on the internet about it. Uh, for me, Superstars came on after this crazy show called WMAC Masters. Do you remember that ridiculous shit? It was, that was it, later. It was um, like all these, you know, characters, and they fought in a dome, and there was story. It was awful. It was just the worst thing was you it can like imagine. Like an American Gladiators type of thing. Yeah, I think it, I did but, see that. That was on Fox. That was on Fox. That was, it was so terrible. Well, let me see if I can bring it up. I actually found this on YouTube. There's yeah, there's episodes of it on YouTube, and like I remember being just crushed because I loved that shit when I was a kid. And there was this twist ending to a season, and then I never saw another episode yeah, ever. Wait. No, oh, really, if you're watching now, oh, I remember. Look this. at it, and then for the, look at it. It looks, it does look oh, like shit, Mortal Kombat, dude. the show. That's as exactly a what it was. Um, there's a lot. Yeah, because that there. that kid, that guy with the um, one guy looks just like Liu Kang. Yeah, the water guy. He like stole the <laughs> ninja star, and that was the twist. And oh man, wait, wait, <sighs> this is on UPN. They say so. They did it get UPN? replayed. I think? Maybe it was UPN. That's a little later. Oh, that's shit, that's way cool. later. WMAC Masters. Wow, that looks ridiculous. Oh, that's intense. I'm watching that shit when I go home. If you're on the audio, just just get when you get a chance, just look up WMC. What is it? WMAC Masters. WMAC Masters. This is ridiculous because there's like this was like Power Rangers, but before that, and they didn't have like morphers. These were just dudes who worked out in the gym. Yeah, yeah, and then they fought in the dome. It was like all kinds of serious. They had all these like show off things i fucked up it's just fucked up it's oh, great it i gotta is. download and watch this shit again <laughs> Tremendous. And, and this is but this is why we watch wrestling and this is why we're sitting here talking about it right now that's because it. at some point in our lives we watched a really bad match between the brooklyn brawler and bret hart that's right that's exactly <laughs> right because we watched a match between Adam Baum and The Undertaker. Oh, man. Yeah, we watched remember, a really bad... Do you remember uh, being young enough to think that um, watching those match between Brett, matches between Bret Hart and um, the Brooklyn Brawler, do you remember being young enough to think, Brett could actually lose? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. He could lose his title to this asshole. Because you know what was the best part about Bret Hart, and this is why people respect him, the man could sell water in an ocean. It was mm-hmm. unbelievable because he would make you really think that he was going to lose to the Brooklyn fucking brawler. Like you literally watch this going, dude, he's really. It, come on, Brett, turn this around. And you were like eight years old and you were like, oh, man, yeah. come on, turn this around, turn this around. And he would sell it like he was really going to lose. And that's why people like us hate John Cena. Because <laughs> I'm watching the, the end of that tag match on because, Raw. Because everybody else is the Brooklyn brawler. And I'm watching this going, okay, he's sort of selling it, sort of selling it. And then all of a sudden, it's like the ref goes, hey, you have like 10 seconds. Finish this crap. And all of a sudden, he gets up from like getting destroyed and hits the attitude adjustment, throws a dude out of the ring, pins him, and the the match is over. That's why people like us aren't big fans of John Cena because he doesn't do a very good job of selling. And we know this. And that's why people like John Cena and some people don't like John Cena and it's really kind of amusing to watch, you know, people like us where I'm, I watch John Cena. I'm like, really, 
you couldn't have sold that for another like two minutes and yeah, maybe yeah. you got like one guy out of the ring and you kind of caught a second wind or something up and you know make it look like it wasn't i just you know make it look more like i just got out of that other than you know i'm john cena and i just hulked up mm-hmm. uh, you know what he needs and- to do more is more roll-ups more roll-ups yeah if yeah. he did more roll-ups then these finishes would be more believable yeah it exactly. wouldn't right. seem like watch- he- it wouldn't seem like he's the incredible fucking Hulk and just beefs up at the end. He's like, no, I'm done with you. Mm-hmm. Like, you, the ending of that match was Otunga throwing uh, McGillicuddy into the ropes, having him bounce back and hit a lariat on John Cena in the corner. <laughs> and then Otunga runs up to try to hit him. Cena ducks it. Otunga's in the corner because he hit his chest on the turnbuckle. Then all of a sudden the match is over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's no like, there's no Hulk up period. There's no Tatanka running around the ring going on the warpath. Yeah, you forgot to uh, bring back the Google people. I, I well, we're not done with the remember when. Uh, to be completely honest, uh, oh. no, 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 we're done. But I'm saying these are the sorts of things that <laughs> no asshole, we're you done. Can, you can bring them back if you'd like. I'm just saying that these are the sorts of things that we saw and that we don't see now, and yeah. I think that's what differentiates our point of view where we look at John Cena and we're like another match where he just hulks up at the end for like two seconds and wins and then you get people kids who are in the crowd going oh he turned it around and he won ah. right there, like, the kids no, believe it but I mean no the, the kids anymore. believe it and, and that's the problem is everybody else is like ah. now AJ I do want to appeal to something uh, about the characters that you're mentioning um, <laughs> because I, I do want to uh, I don't know have you ever watched Chikara no. Okay, and I know we talked about it here on the show, but but it's a little bit more of the character driven stuff. Like there's people, there's ant people, for God's <laughs> sake. I mean, there's a guy called Hallow Wicked. There's a guy called Ultra Mantis, uh, and there's like evil plots. And it's, uh, I mean, it, it really is a comic book in a ring. Uh, like the guys here in the video, if you're on the video side. Uh, this is from yes. the podcast to Go Go. Uh, they're called Fist, uh, which stands for Friends in Similar Tights. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is that is the kind of humor that's going on here, and I really think that would appeal to uh, the kind of thing that you're into, and maybe a little bit of what you, what you miss from the good old days. Because uh, yeah, you, what I want is um, I, I think I might need to start watching AON. That was an awesome. <laughs> that's an awesome name. Just what? Just friends because in similar tights. Friends in similar tights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was asking them. I was like, I was like, what does that stand for? Yeah, friends in similar tights. I was like. Wow, the friend of the show Johnny Gargano was almost part of that group, right? I think maybe he was for a little bit. So, <laughs> of course. But I mean, watching AON, like listening to Bobby's AON reports, I'm like, man, this is the kind of crap I wanted to watch when I was a kid. Like, hey, this guy got killed, but he's probably <laughs> going to come back from the dead. At least I think he will. He's he can't be dead. I mean, we haven't seen anybody grieving. Mm. So. <laughs> 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 but then again, but then again, nobody like, cared. Dead. Everybody's like, nobody ah, happens. In nobody Johnstown. cared. Nobody cared it when a Samo- in <laughs> Nobody cared when a Samoan got kidnapped in a black truck. You know, nobody really asked what happened with them. You know, they no. started coming back with a knife and, and all that stuff. So as we mentioned, we do have an experiment we're going tonight. There's there's Hot Wheels going on right there. Balls. I think he's on. Uh, Wheels, talk to us. Nope. Wrong hey there. Oh. There he is. Whoa. There I he is. I thought you had the wrong knob. Hey, am I here? Now, this is the new Whoa. thing. This is the new thing. Google Hangout, if you're hey, lucky enough to have a Google Plus. I don't know what's going on. I believe Google Plus is open to everyone now. I, is is, is yeah. it open to everybody yeah. officially? As far as I know. So, we're trying to It's open to everyone with, with a Google account. Yeah. We're, we're experimenting with this. We're in here. Some, somebody has us on. Mute it. Mute, mute us. Mute us. You're on the radio. Turn you're down your radio, 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 sir. Turn down your radio. Turn down your radio. <laughs> if you're not hearing us through headphones, then you're probably... Doing it wrong. Doing it wrong. So... Oh, man. There we go. That picture is... is I don't remember where I put it. You'll get it. I'm going to be sending it to you in just a second, okay. sorry. I don't remember where I put it. You'll uh, get it. Uh, 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 Bobby, are you, you, check, you there? You checked in? Oh, now we muted everybody. Oh, no, we're huddling. We're muted every- well, hey, this is an experiment. We'll see how this goes. Oh, we're hanging out. We're not huddling. We're, we're hanging out. No, the huddle's something different. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think whatever we do this, uh, anybody who wants to do this, uh, get headphones. Yes. Or a headset uh, of some kind. Anybody who wants to do this. Just so we don't uh, have this headphones. issue. Yes. Or a headset of some kind. Uh, 
like what's, ha like what's happening right now. Right. But like I was able to say something like Sunday, 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 and it was awesome. So... There he goes. Hey, there, we, there we see the cover. It's Bobby. He's putting his headphones on. You uh, you just got an email, sir. I just got an email? Yes. I still have a it's video It's important going. to look at it. It's important? I yes. can't share this, can I? Yes. Is it an email it. from the general manager? No, it's an <laughs> email from Will. Yeah, that's true. Actually, it's I got another email. Screen cap of Google Hangout. My video froze for a moment on Google Hangout, and the results were... <laughs> Naughty. Hilarious. Naughty. All involves. right, so our friend Bobby is—he's uh, on the on the Google Hangout now, and he's got his headphones on, so we can unmute him. And and um, but yeah, this—I mean, this is the sort of thing that we that we <laughs> did last night mm -hmm. uh, for Monday Night Raw, and it was me, Sorg, Riz, Bobby. You were in there, mm -hmm. and I think Wrestle Fan was in there too. And we're just I sitting there hear. watching Raw. What? Wait, hold laughing. on. Breaking news. Hmm. Good humor responded to customer demands for WWE ice cream bars. What? Wait for it. Uh, thank you. This is okay. Good humor who made the WWE ice cream bars that CM Punk demanded on last night on Raw began the day by sending out the following to people who contacted them to request their return. Um, do, 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 do thank you for writing us regarding good humor. The product you have contacted us, us about has been discontinued. Our company's goal is to provide consumers with a variety of products. Rapid dap deep a do. Uh, we apologize it's no longer available. Suck a dick. Due to the influx of, re the, of requests, they seem to have changed the response, which now reads as follows. Thank you for writing us regarding good humor ice cream and sharing your sharing your thoughts we're always appreciative of our customers loyalty and creativity you may be pleased to know that other customers have asked for the same product as well customer comments are taken into consideration when planning changes to existing products as well as the introduction of new products so uh the the tides are turning and uh there's a link here which i'll drop into the chat well i'll send a sorg and he drop in checks i'm not sure, sure. thing um, and i think we you should can, also post this you on can on the mayhemshow.com and it's a contact <laughs> thing for good humor. Oh, that's getting flooded. That's yeah. definitely getting flooded. There it is. And you too can uh, bring back the WWE ice cream bars. I'm gonna do it right now. Look at my ice cream bars! How did you send this picture to me? What is this? It's hilarious, it's, isn't it? It's uh, it's just AJ with, with his, his mouth, mouth open. open. Yeah, his um. video froze in that pose. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh. ah, that's my face. That is your face. In a awkward position. Hold on, <laughs> let me do other ones for you. Here, ready? <laughs> ready? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, and this one. This okay. one. Ready? Ready? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that that looks like he's just. Is his pants off? What is? No, oh, no. Aww. That's that's my dick is bleeding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Hey. Oh, we got somebody in the hangout. How you doing, Hot Wheels? Oh, maybe he's on the delay. Hey, I'm doing well. How's everybody doing? All right. <laughs> so we'll see how this works. Please allow for a very long delay. Uh, is what I think is going to be happening here. So, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll uh, we if you listen to Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, you'll understand why Google Hangouts can be awesome because mm -hmm. of said delay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, but we, go ahead and well, buy the app. It's a dollar ninety nine in your iPhone, <laughs> iPad, <laughs> we did, Android, we did app stores. So go buy it. Bob just posted the uh, the uh, Angry Grandpa Pecan Pinwheel video on what? Twitter. What? What? That's our the pecan pinwheel is our fine, damn it. Yeah, mm -hmm. just, oh, I don't want information or offers from anyone. Fuck you, good humor. Bring back my ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so did anybody here watch Destination X? Is that a thing? No, I don't think so. Damn it, I know I did. Okay, I wanted to watch like a replay. Oh, I did. Or no. I, hey, yeah. Hey, I watched. I AJ I watched did. a TNA pay per view. Wow. Okay, now what did Over you think? Over at my friend Frito's place. You're what, lying. What What did you think of Destination X? I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, it was the first time... I did. I I thought it was pretty good. It was, it was a really good pay-per-view. 
It's it had really good matches. I wish the Destination X match would have had, uh, or the Ultimate X match had two more guys in it. It seemed like it was missing like two people, like that little bit more, who. that little bit more of like of, of mayhem going on in there. Right, because there was there was always something involving like two guys, and the ending of that match was solid. I was hoping Shannon Moore was going to fall to- on the top of his head instead of on his back. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, and then the, the, the Shima's Ion match or the Zima Ion match. He gets stuck in the ground. Yeah. I mean, that, that Shima's Ion match was incredible. <laughs> What's going on? Bob, Honestly. No, Bobby said one random thing that got through, and the next message was Aaron West has muted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're figuring out this hangout thing. That's fine. That's fine. <sighs> But I mean, you have guys. You have these guys. These four guys who put on a clinic, and anybody who wants to like who wants to watch TNA mm-hmm. should watch that match. The problem is, is that the people who write TNA still like big dudes. Yeah. And um, because of that, this matches like that don't happen very often. Yeah. Um, which is really annoying, especially during the uh, the Brian Kendrick Abyss match, where immortal comes out and it's like four big dudes and they're beating up on this one little dude and a bunch of other little dudes come out and they get all beat up and then it just takes more little dudes to beat up the big dudes and i'm watching this going are you really serious right now like you have this great pay-per-view you have these great matches featuring these guys who are putting on a very athletic show and then you have to ruin it with bully ray gunner and Scott Steiner, dear Scott Steiner, no one believes you anymore. <laughs> Get the absolute it. fuck out of wrestling, please. <laughs> Just can you do like a farewell tour somewhere in like, I don't know, Mid-South or somewhere where I don't have to see your retarded face week in and week out? I mean, it's ridiculous. Like those three guys didn't need to be on that show any way, shape, or form. But still, this was uh, you know they had to stick that in there. That was their destination, their their X division uh, uh, deal. You know what I mean? With with with, with that it still included Immortal that got them included, and you know that, right. That's I mean the they, main storyline. Like, so I want to try to remember who it was. I want to say it was Mad Mike who was talking about like stop quoting the 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 art of war. Yeah. Which, fine, I get it, that was Abyss's little thing. But the p- part that I really liked about it was that Abyss was setting up why he was the champion. He was setting up why he wants to win. Mm-hmm. He was setting up his like whole strategy behind it. And it was I, I thought it was a solid lead-in to the match that didn't bury Kendrick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... And I, and I think that that was a really well-written promo, and whoever backstage at TNA who wrote that uh, deserves a small round of applause for not just saying, I have a bitch, I'm going to beat you, oh, you don't know pain, and then just going out and having him body slam Brian Kendrick on the tax for shock value. <laughs> that's, that's what bothers me about TNA. Is they, like, Abyss was bleeding. Why? Why did blood need to come into that match? That's really like Abyss. Unfortunately, like Abyss is becoming kind of a one trick pony in that in that sense, Uh, because it's like, well, he gets in there and he has to bleed and he has to do this hardcore stuff. And that's really all he can do. You know, I mean, look, he just he doesn't look uh, too good these days, for one thing. So it's it's a little rough and and, and it's it's getting harder to to kind of buy him. You know, who was uh, who actually um, there are two people who bled on that show. It was Abyss, and I can't remember the other person who bled. Uh, uh, RVD. Uh, um, RVD, but I think that might have been a little more legit. And th- he may have been busted open, yeah, but at the yeah. same time, anytime I see blood in a match, and it's not, and it looks to me at least like a blade job, which I think RVD's was bladed. Mm-hmm. I watch that, and I think, was this necessary? Was this something that we really needed is this benefiting the match and i think this is now where wwe has kind of turned the tables and said okay we don't need to have guys bleed every single match Mm -hmm. we can have a good match and if a guy bleeds it's for a reason and not just for the sake of this guy bleeding because we want to make this look as real as possible 
And I think that's where Abyss falls down completely. Yeah. And then we do have like hardcore justice coming up and we're, you know, we're going to see more of that. Hopefully it's not going to be another ECW reunion show like we had uh, last year. Uh, but Abyss is all over that. It's going to be the crazy shock value blood stuff. And we're, I, I can't see it being a, a great follow up. But doesn't it even, feel like. Even Extreme Rules in WWE, they didn't, they don't yeah, have very much yeah. blood. Or Hell in a Cell. And we've talked about that before, you know? Um, I don't know. It, it's it's interesting. They had a good run here. Uh, I, I I think it brought some of the big wrestling fans back in, but I can't. I don't know. I don't know. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> I'm juggling some stuff here. Um, but uh, but still, it it gave them a nice kind of launching point. And, and just looking at that four way match between four unsigned guys, including a friend of the show. Um, <laughs> It was like the crowd was chanting, sign them all. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I'm sorry. I could watch. I think I could watch a, a regular show based on all the guys on that pay-per-view. And then we, yep. we didn't even mention about the people that left afterwards. Generation Me asked for their notice and was given it to given it the next day. Oh, yeah. Um, who else left? Orlando, Orlando, Jordan. Orlando Jordan was let go. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see him brought back to WWE. Really? WWE? Yeah. I, well, I don't think they could do what they did concerning the... the, the uh, 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 you know the gay reference problems lately. I I don't think they would be able to let him do that kind of stuff. Mm. But I mean, he you know not that he has he was that kind of character. He's more of a regular, you know, vanilla character when he was there. So he was. I, he, I he was think more of a they lackey. could. I wonder if TNA could split up their programming into. Do you think they have enough in the heavyweight division to support a one-hour show? Just heavyweights. Of just heavyweights, and, uh, yeah. or heavyweights and girls. Where do the girls go? Uh, I would want them on the heavyweight show. That's like filler. Yeah, yeah. Because there's only so many big dudes falling down that I can watch. But I think if you put, I think you could break it up and make it like a TNA X Division show, and like a TNA heavyweight show. I agree. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. And you could agree. split that up because they're clearly. Two completely separate entities inside of TNA. You could have an entire division dedicated to X Division guys, guys who are indie wrestlers who you could bring in for matches, which is what they've done in the past with the X Division, mm-hmm. including a friend of the show, Shima Zion. Give it, give it a little bit of a showcase. Give it a showcase. Give it an hour. Give it. Uh, I don't know if uh, if you want to devote the first hour of Impact or Impact Wrestling, or whatever it is they want to call themselves this week, devote the first hour to X Division, devote the second hour to heavyweight stuff, and then even for pay-per-views, if you really want to do it, you could have like the X Division guy say, you know what, I'm sick of these heavyweights getting all the showtime and blah, 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 and there's an angle that you could do to have it cross-promote. Or you could say, like, hey, we're the heavyweights, we're the guys who bring the money in for this company, like they're doing with this Immortal angle. Mm-hmm. And they could do that and have it cross the shows, but still give these guys a spotlight to shine with. Because these are guys who put on an athletic, entertaining show that the heavyweight guys can't do. And because a lot of the heavyweight guys are older guys, they're not guys that people are like, oh, man, I need to stop everything I'm doing right now to watch this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get, if, I had, if I had to watch a match between... Uh, Bully Ray and Scott Steiner I think I would just destroy my TV and just not really want to watch anything of that sort because that would be a terrible match it's like Sting and Undertaker to me it's two big guys two old guys that would take forever to have a match has anybody seen like uh, when they do the live spots on the impacts um, how full some of those stadiums look I don't know yeah. if they're just sticking everybody in one section of a baseball stadium, but it looks pretty good when they're going up like Buffalo. Uh, one was in uh, what Harlem, Harlem, something like that, Brooklyn, I think. Um, and, and up in those areas, they are actually drawn. It looks pretty decent. I mean, it's not giant. It looks good on TV at least, but it's not giant. It's not giant arenas that you know WWE is selling out. But still, it, it's it's they seem to be doing okay, and I don't know if the name value is working or not. But I, I think the the house shows, though, they're picking smaller venues 
because they're, they they know they're not going to get a big arena like in yeah. Pittsburgh. They're going after small arenas. Like when they went, they did a house show in Erie, and they did it at the Civic Arena. That building holds four thousand on a good day. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and, and absolutely to tops. Fair, that holds four thousand. To be fair, WWE house shows do go for the small venues. I remember seeing a Raw house show back in the day. I think the main to give you an idea, the main event was Batista versus Triple H and Ric Flair in a handicap match. It was in Elmira, New York. This was like a small, I don't know, single A uh, hockey arena. You know, I mean, all it had. Uh, have you been down to Ross Draper Ice Gardens, AJ? No, I haven't. Uh, uh, but the the it, one place that I went to and saw quite possibly the greatest house show of my life, I went out to Johnstown and saw Bobby, mm-hmm. and uh, we went to the I think it was a SmackDown house show. At the Cambria County War Memorial Arena, <laughs> um, where I believe Dolph Ziggler gave someone a noogie, <laughs> which I called him out for from the crowd. I actually yelled the words, did you just give him a noogie? And he yelled, what? <laughs> As he's got a guy in a headlock and he's like messing with his head, but he looked like he was giving him a noogie and it was awesome. There were, I mean, we were probably... Oh, and then this is where CM Punk also showed where he was as a, as a heel to me. There was a lady in the front row, and Bobby was mentioning this in the chat room, and this is why I bring it up. There was a lady in the front row with a baby on her hip. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This, I is, can't t- make this, this is typical in Johnstown. I understand. She's got a baby on her hip. She's front row, and she is giving Punk the business. She's like, you ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. You can get the hell on out of here. And she's just got her baby on her hip, and her baby's just bouncing around. The head is bouncing all over the place. I'm thinking this kid is going to break his neck. And she is just yelling. And at one point, I think CM Punk, I forget who he was wrestling at the time. He throws him out of the ring. He stares this lady down. And she was a bigger lady. And he stares at her. And he lays down on his back in the middle of the ring and just starts doing sit-ups in her face. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. And, like, in the middle of the match, he's just, like, he, like, threw the guy out of the ring. Again, I forget who he was wrestling. And he's just yelling at her going, why don't you eat some celery? (laughs) (laughs) He is just absolutely (laughs) destroying this lady. And I have never had a better time in my life. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's why I want to go. That's why you go to house shows. Don't go to house shows in big cities. No. Just don't. If there's a house, like when they do this, they're doing a SmackDown house show here, or they're doing a Ross house show again here or something I, here I in see Pittsburgh. One's going to be up in Youngstown. One's going to be down. They a lot of times do down in Steubenville. And I've been down to Steubenville, uh, West Virginia, for the uh, their indoor football league game. I don't know if the team's even there. It was like the, the Steubenville Greyhounds or something. But it's a smaller arena, and that would be the place to watch the WWE show. Yeah. If you ever have the chance to go see a house show, mm-hmm. and it's you know it's going to be in the tiniest arena you've ever heard of in your life, yeah. go yeah. do it. Spend I, it's it Literally, I think my tickets were 20 bucks. And maybe, maybe 15 for the smaller venues like that, too. Uh, we, we paid for, uh, we were nine rows back. That's all there was back on the floor. Okay. They just had nine rows around the ring. It was bleach, like a set of bleachers that went around the arena and they let you, and, and have you been to a venue for, for a WWE show where they let you re-entry to go out and smoke? No. Yeah. That's, that's how this was. Uh, That shows you the kind of place where they were just completely open for that. So, yeah, I mean, we were watching it. We were Bobby and I were, I think, second row up in the bleachers so we could at least see what was going down on the floor. And I think there was maybe five rows around the ring. Yeah, exactly. And there were kids and people from like the middle of Pennsylvania (laughs) who were yelling things at these wrestlers that was unbelievable. And I want to say it was uh, this was when Crime Time was still in there. And Justin Roberts. (laughs) And they have like. Justin Roberts had a corded mic, and the reason I'm sitting up yeah, for this is just yeah. so I can show you this. So he's got a corded mic, and but he had it down by his by his waist, and Shad stepped on the cord on purpose. So when Justin Roberts went to pull the mic up to his face, he like pulled it up, but then he like got stopped and he was like, "Oh, oh, oh what happened?" <laughs> and JTG is just busted up in the ring laughing and like lets go of the cord, and Justin Roberts is just looking at him going ass like these guys travel to these shows and this is where they get to have fun and this is where you get to see these guys 
just mess around with their wrestling friends. And it goes to show they still it's, have these it's matches just, and stuff. It's not just that vanilla product we see on, on Monday and Fridays, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. on the internet or whatever. There's no writing. I mean, yeah, exactly. There's, exactly. They cut, they cut promos. Sometimes they try out things. You'll see a match let yeah. and then see pretty much the same match on Raw the next week. I've seen that a couple of times happen. Yep. That's how they get their rehearsal and, in. Yeah, it is like a rehearsal thing. Like, I know like for a while, remember when they were trying to push Kozlov against Triple H for the title? <laughs> there was yeah. a, there was talk about how they were doing this, you know, at the shows and said how bad it was. <laughs> so they didn't know if they were going to do it. I think they knocked it halfway down the pay-per-view card and, and it was still bad. Um, but that's the test out for that. You know, we saw Mason Ryan here at the SmackDown House show uh, the day after Christmas. Um, and, uh, he was built from P- Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> he's not even American. So was Colt Cabana. Yeah, for... <laughs> so was Colt Cabana when they had him in there. Uh, but, but still, to see something like that, and then, like, what, four weeks later, we saw this guy pop up. It's like, he's not from Pittsburgh? What the? <laughs> da? We you got know? bamboozled. I mean, like, I haven't seen that guy in an indie show. What are you <laughs> talking about? And that's the best part about going to house shows. And this is still going back to that. You get that almost that indie show feeling yeah you get yeah. that like everybody is there but this is like the biggest thing that's hit their town in a while mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so people are like amped up about it you're in a small arena you know they can hear you uh-huh. there's no pyro there's no screen they're barely playing the music and these guys are messing with the crowd it's <laughs> fun to watch it's great. so if you ever get the chance to go see a wwe house show Find the smallest town near you. Uh, Sorg, do they ever go to Steubenville, Ohio? Oh. Steubenville? Oh, my God. That's, that'd be so small. Wait, if they go to Steubenville, Ohio, I'm in. I will drive <laughs> Maybe that's why it is Steubenville, Ohio, isn't it? It's right across the line from West Virginia. Wheeling. Yeah, yeah. Wheeling, West Virginia. But no, Steubenville. I think Steubenville is where they end up there. Steubenville, Steubenville yeah. Wheeling, somewhere around that yeah. area. But I heard it's really good. And they they, brought, they have pretty decent draws at those small arenas down there. So I, I really consider making that road trip down there to go see it instead of the one here at the console. I mean, it's cool because it's a nice cheap ticket to go see. And, you, it was, it, you know, you, you can see everything uh, in that arena, like when we go see arena football. But and, and to go to those smaller towns is and then go see the people that believe in it still. You know, oh like, yeah, like there I don't, are people. I don't, it's still real to them. David. I don't tend to talk much about uh, RWA here on this show, but that is the the most interesting thing. There is like it's not a show that you or I are going to be into because you or I are you know oh I've seen this a million times. I, I was talking with uh, a friend of the show Chris Larusso uh, about his match, and I was like oh, I hate it when this guy like gets out and 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 runs around and and rags at the crowd and everything. He's like yeah, but in this kind of crowd, it kind of works. Because, yeah, you and I, guys like you and I, our crowd are like, oh, come on, get in there and wrestle, and you're just annoyed. But most of the crowd is eating it up, yelling back at him, and they're into it, and he's getting he's getting easy heat because he can, you know? And, yeah, if and, you want a, if you want a, uh, an example of that, mm-hmm. uh, Art of Wrestling podcast done by Cole Cabana, yeah. um, go watch or go listen to the Austin Aries uh, uh, podcast where he talks about what happened when he punched a guy in the face. <laughs> I mean, this guy apparently was was jawing at him and he would, he had finished his match and this guy like grabbed him and like pulled him back and, and Austin, you know, Austin like pushed him off and then the guy like reached and like grabbed him again because I guess he was falling and Austin Aries just reeled around, bam, popped him in the face. <laughs> And it uh, was just, you know, those are those are the sorts of things that, not that do happen, but these are the sorts of people that we're talking about. These people <laughs> still think it's real. Mm-hmm. These mm-hmm. people are like, it's still real to me, damn it. Mm-hmm. Hey, I you mean, know? we well, a, a few months ago, uh, and I, uh, LB, you remember Strider? I do remember, remember Strider. Strider? He's I doing do. really, he's doing really good. He's doing a lot of stuff around the area, uh, doing really well for himself, I think. Uh, well, they were doing an angle where he got, he was getting attacked and he was getting his knees bashed off of the, a bash of the, a bash off of the turn, the turnbuckle, not the turnbuckle, the, uh, the, the post. Mm-hmm. Three girls in the front row with Jason Cage t-shirts just crying, <laughs> crying. I'm standing there like mostly in the middle of them, you know, shooting. Mm-hmm. And I thought they were going to get involved like so bad because they were like just a foot away. I'm like, oh God, don't get in this. I don't want to, you know, watch my camera, you know? Um, <laughs> but, but they are just, into it man it's, it's incredible it, it is, is incredible. we're on right now with our guest for part three 
of the comics and wrestling, Alan's, Alan Evans from RivalAngels.com. How are you doing tonight? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Excellent, excellent. Thanks for catching up with us. Uh, I say you're, you're part three. You are the grand finale of this. And I understand I just missed you at the Pittsburgh uh, Comic Con uh, when we were up there. Yeah, uh, we were probably just like two ships passing in the night. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, I was out because I was shooting wrestling. Um, <laughs> so uh, when I got back, I was like, oh, th- this guy? I- I've heard of this guy. I've-, I've heard of Rival Angels. So for those 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 that maybe have not come across Rival Angels, uh, tell, them, uh, tell them what's about. All right. Well, it's about uh, four girls trying to make it in pro wrestling. Um, they live together, they train together, and they find out that uh, being roommates is actually... A little more challenging than actually making it as a wrestler. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent. Now I, I saw you're you're up uh, four chapters in this so far. Oh, a little more than that. A little it's, more. Uh, I was going we're over the... about five hundred and fifty-two pages in. Oh, geez. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Episode five fifty-three. I'm seeing on your front page. I was going. Yeah. I was going by the new. You got it. I give you a lot of credit. You have a handy uh, new readers uh, section over here. Oh, um, okay. Uh, can, can you can tell us how that came about. The uh, oh my new readers section. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, a lot of people, oh, you know, they're, they're always coming and they always want to catch up. They don't necessarily want to read from page one all the way straight through to page fifty three, and it's perfectly understandable. So uh, I try and update it, and I'm trying to think the last time I did. I mean, I think I have like chapter thirteen up there, maybe fourteen. I see it going uh, all the way down to eighteen. It seems. Oh, hey, great. Obviously, I misscrolled when I was checking it out earlier. <laughs> I have a lot to catch up on, it seems. So, excellent, excellent. Um, so, uh, where did the concept of Rival Angels come from for you? Well, um, I was uh, watching, um, what was it? It's called uh, Fight Girls. It was this reality TV show about, um, I think, eight or ten girls trying to make it in uh, MMA. And uh, I've been a lot just a lifelong fan of wrestling since about 1986 when Sting came on and that like changed it all for me. I became hooked mm-hmm. and uh, it never occurred to me up until um, the summer of 2007 to actually, you know, I saw, I saw the fight girls and I said, you know what? I should do this as a comic, but I don't want to do it as MMA because well, MMA is great. Uh, it just doesn't have that same, um, doesn't have the same showmanship that wrestling does. Pro wrestling is, <laughs> all about the showmanship and i knew that would come across way better uh than mma so uh and then i saw that nobody was really doing it uh and it just so happens that summer mike kingston came out with headlock and i was like damn i thought i was gonna be the first (laughs) one but as it turns out uh you know our stuff is completely different which is the great thing because uh, since then a couple of other uh, wrestling comics have come up and we've all managed to stay away from stepping on each other's toes yeah, yeah, it definitely does seem to be like I, I know. I know for me, like I, I've read a little bit of a little bit of yours, a little bit of Botch Spot, um, you know, of course, Mike Kingston stuff, and now you know the zombie guys there that, that that we talked to a few weeks ago. So yeah, it really seems like uh, uh, there's not much for copycats like you see in like the the like the Penny Arcade Control Alt Delete kind of thing, you know, right. for technology. Which is really nice and refreshing, but you think it's because it's kind of a new medium and, and people maybe are just getting into having serious comic books uh, on the subject? Well, I think um, web comics uh, as a whole are a lot easier to do mm-hmm. today than even a couple of years ago. So now, uh, and then people are seeing like, oh, well, here's this this niche that's really hasn't been um, discovered before because when I was researching in 2007, nobody was doing any kind of wrestling whatsoever. And, you know, nature of horrors a vacuum. So it, uh, I guess when it rains, it pours, you know, it's mm-hmm. well, once Mike started going and then I did, and then a couple others started going in, I think they saw that this was a, uh, well, all, every one of us really love wrestling. And I think that comes across. Um, and they thought, hey, well, I'm going to do this too. Excellent. Uh, do you get a lot of? Uh, 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 is, is it mostly male readers that, that that are that are on this? Do you get a lot of females into this because of the subject matter? Uh, I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at the comic shows, I th- um, got, get a lot of gals that come. Uh, in fact, at Pittsburgh, there was a family. Uh, there was a mom, three girls, 
And the mom picked up the book and she says, uh, Ooh, this looks like girls being mean to each other. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, yeah, there is some of that. She's like, I got to get this. She's like, Oh, I don't have any cash. And one of her daughters whipped out some money. Hmm. She's like, Oh, my God, my daughter's going to buy me something. Uh, and that's just, just one small example. Uh, according to my um, analytics, I'm somewhere around um, 70% male, 30% female, and I'll take that <laughs> any day. Oh, definitely. That's a great variety, especially for comic books in general. Mm. Well, from what I understand, uh, girls come, they're not coming so much for the wrestling. They're seeing how the girls are are treating each other. And a, a lot of times it's not good, but it's not all just the cattiness because uh, there's a couple of girls that are BFF and, mm-hmm. you know, they try and stick through each other, stick with each other through thick and thin. And I think uh, even if they say it or not, I think uh, a lot of the gals come to, to see that because there's really not a whole lot of strong female friendships in media today. I mean... I suppose Gilmore Girls when it was around, but I don't know if anything else that's really out there right now. <laughs> I watched the Gilmore Girls. I, I, I always love the dialogue. Um, do, do you... Okay, being this is like... Let me get a little bit of background. Oh, I lost I lost your audio. Hello? Uh-huh. Hey, okay. There, there you are. All right, it looks like we had a Skype mess up. Uh, surprise, surprise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I guess it was, uh, being this is a more, a, a, I guess, a female perspective for this comic. Are you? Do you have any female advisors to make sure you're getting it right? Because, I mean, I would worry about that, being like a, a guy. I have, I have my wife. Uh, okay. And I don't mind telling you, she's a big uh, wrestling fan, fan of UFC, football, uh she loves it, and because I get a lot of questions sometimes, like, what does your wife think about this? Does she let you do this? And I'm like, she supports it 110%. Um, I also have a couple of friends in comics right now. Um, Laura Innes from who does the comic, the dreamercomic.com. Mm-hmm. She, uh, uh, she's actually written a chapter before uh, in Rival Angel. She's going to write a chapter again uh, soon. And uh, I get... Uh, some great uh, advice from her too. So it's, uh, and I do my own research. I, I've actually read up uh, on quite a few books on women's studies and um, pop culture, that sort of thing. Nice, cool. Nice. No, where do you get your, um, like, what's your uh, comic background? Did you start um, like so many of us did, like reading X Men in the eighties, or were you uh-huh. an indies guy, or? Uh, one of the first comics I. Uh, I, I actually G.I. Joe the cartoon got me into nice. the comics because there would be that there'd be this commercial for it and uh there uh then they'd show like the comic cover and I'm like, Oh my god, I gotta go get that. It looks like it looks so great. And uh so one of my first comics was um was G. I. Joe, Star Ears, um and then I saw that they had Spider Man. Um I remember one of my earliest memories is seeing Spider Man, uh, you know, the original um on on tv and it just blew my mind so then when i saw it at the comic shop i was like oh, i gotta get this and that was about 1984 i think it was about fourth grade for me that i really got into comics and i uh, don't mind telling you i get comics to this day excellent 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 what are you uh, what are you reading now um let's see fables um uh batman inc um i was reading runaways for quite a while uh ultimate spider-man the, I was getting the Ultimates, but I'm getting one, one of the many Ultimates uh, comic now. Um, trying to think. Uh, well, with DC doing their big um, reboot, I'm probably going to pick up a couple more new mm. DC titles. Because um, they, they just look interesting. I, yeah, I'm curious to myself, see what they're going to do uh, with it. I like to think of myself as a Marvel guy, but DC mm. looks like it's got some, some good stuff. And uh, for like me, I would love to support more IDW or um, or Dynamite, but they don't have a whole lot. Um, uh, my pal, who I just mentioned before, Laura Innes, her book is through IDW, uh, and when it comes out, I, that's probably my favorite comic right now. Um, especially because I don't have to worry about uh, reboots and all that other fun stuff that uh, the big two like to do. <laughs> it does get a little frustrating okay. sometimes. What oh, is damn. your uh, inspiration for doing the uh, yeah. that really brought you through to doing this to really developing this comic out? Uh, was it? Uh... Go ahead again, AJ. 
what uh what was your inspiration for for really drawing this out and and going with the i guess the female side of things versus the the usual male side of things um i for okay for me to do a, a male wrestling comic it, it it seemed to make sense but i actually thought it'd be more interesting uh and certainly a little more provocative to go with uh the ladies over the guys and i'm really glad i did that because with mike coming out with headlocked i definitely wanted to be different from him um i'm a big fan of shimmer and that was right around the time that i first discovered it because it's only it's about 100 miles away and when i found out it was only 100 miles i was like i gotta go see this and it's (laughs) uh so much energy just packed in this little uh little space and i was like i gotta be able to i want to put that into comic book format and i think i really do believe it's uh the women and the charisma and what they bring forth and it's uh that's uh really it i just thought it'd be a more interesting uh way to go than over the guys point definitely fantastic uh now i i we've asked this of our of our last couple of guests and uh you know obviously we have the more uh you know a a different look at at wrestling with with you and, and and mike um what what do you think of back in the day the uh, the, the big twos attempts with uh, WCW's comics or or the Undertaker comics or <laughs> or, or or you know got the uh, Ultimate Warrior comic and stuff like that? Did, did you read those? Are those a a man? I can do so much better than this kind of kind of uh, thing. You know, I have to say, uh, of course, I'm completely biased here. I, I really think Rival Angels beats all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, the Nash comic, right? I mean, he was a bounty hunter in the future. Uh, yeah, if you were a yeah. fan of Nash, I-, I was a big fan of Nash, but I picked it up and, I- and I'm a fan of comics and wrestling. And, and I'm looking at him and I'm like, what the hell is this crap? This is awful. <laughs> and, you know, and so he's this bounty hunter and he's banging chicks. And I'm like, oh, this looks like some just glorified, you know, uh, ego piece. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The WCW comic, I think it was issue three where uh, Lex Luger tried to trick Sting into going on a boat, and then he tried to blow the boat up. And I was like, all right, this is sort of more in the right <laughs> Which direction. actually, I think that Why might have been... blow people up? That, I mean, that, that, that might have been a real storyline. I believe it was. I, I think there, there wasn't there like some, like, they boated out to an island, and man, or whatever, Cactus Jack had kidnapped somebody. Uh, you yeah, know, they got I really, remember that. They, they did spent, get like, really, a lot of money on that. really theatrical in that era. So <laughs> I, I don't think they were too far from what they were doing. You know? <laughs> so. Right, and then you had uh, Undertaker, who was... Who's wrestling demons in the ring and how he exercised them was uh, tombstone pile driving him. And I was like, wow, you know, this is, it, it almost seemed like they were making it too hard on themselves. Um, <laughs> so, and then even just this latest attempt by WWE with their zombie thing where they have Triple H and Cena and Undertaker, and they're, you know, attacking the zombies. I'm like, wow, man, you guys just really don't get it. Do you? <laughs> um, but that being said, I, I guess I don't know what else they should do. I really, because I think they think making a wrestling comic would be redundant, but that's where I think they're kind of missing the mark on that. And um, yeah, some of these, those, I think they should have just did stuck to what they did best, and that's wrestling stuff. But they didn't, and that's why you have this this cosmic mess of different things. And, and you know, it's funny. I saw Nash at um, a local wrestling show here, uh, Great Lakes Championship Wrestling. And sure as shit, he's selling his comic there. No way. Wow. Still. I mean, he sells it online for like 50 bucks. It was like a maybe a $3 comic back in the day. And, oh, he signed it. Well, I, I guess that's cool. And I, I, like I said, I love Nash, but I don't think I'll be paying 50 yeah, bucks. For that. How, how long ago was that that it came out? Oh, oh, you know what? Uh, I'm going to say oh it was 1997 God. or 1998. It is on the front. No, I, okay. I guess it is. It is. I, I have it here. I, I don't think I've ever seen this. <laughs> so this this was not a like hot mess. <laughs> this was like independent, right? Kind of like the Ultimate Warrior one. Like this was not. Yeah, WCW. I think it might have been published through Image Comics, but I I don't know for a fact. But I mean, I just... it wasn't linked with like WCW, or obviously WWF or anything like that. No, uh, yeah, it's just wow. So hey, hey, at least he's not like fighting Santa Claus or something like that. Like Ultimate Warrior was. <laughs> that wasn't fighting. That wasn't... He was raping Santa. Oh, Claus. Oh, that's right. That's right. The that's... Ultimate Warrior <laughs> raped Santa. I mean, Claus. It, it's like, how, well, why do you wonder how involved are these guys with these projects? And then is this really the image that they see themselves as? 
<laughs> yeah, I, well, I think with Nash, he was probably happy, like, oh, I'm this tough guy who rides a motorcycle and bangs chicks. Well, okay, sure. That's, <laughs> you know, I, I can't see him saying, no, that's... Let's, mm. Yeah, that, that, that's that close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good... Yeah, you know, it's, uh, yeah, well, like LB, if you had a self-imaged uh, uh, comic, what would you be doing? Um, that's a good question. I can tell you it would in- probably involve a long black trench coat. Okay. And uh, some kind of super... Pa- I, it, I don't know. It would probably be just like Assassin's Creed, um, except uh, with magic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say that. What about you there, Alan? That's a good big question, by the way. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> that's good stuff. That's probably the best idea for a wrestler comic I've probably ever heard. Um, and, and, you know, to be honest, uh, a couple of years ago at Wizard World, I talked to Candice Michelle and Christy Hemme. And, you know, I gave them a copy of my book. I was like, hey, you know, I think you girls are great. And they're like, oh, so you're an artist. You should draw us the superheroes. I was like, hey, we're onto something here. <laughs> and it's, you know, I don't want to sound like a prude, but um, like Christy Hemme was like, yeah, I want to be a superhero who, who jumps around. I want to be one that like bounces around. I'm like, you mean like parkour? She's like, no, just like there's a room and I'm jumping around. <laughs> all right, all right, fine. <laughs> you know, okay. And then uh, Candace Michelle's like, you know what? I want to, ha- I want to have uh, guns that come out of my boobs, but it, they don't shoot people. <laughs> it, it's just like shoots a gas, like a laughing gas. And I'm, so I'm like, all right. So you got one girl jumping around, and you got this laughing gas come out of her boobs. And I was like, all right, girls, thanks for your time. And I, you know. And it's stuff like that that I kind of have to fight against, like when I'm at a comic show and someone comes to me like, oh, female wrestling, huh? You know, then give me kind of that hoity-toity thing. And then, you know, you have Candace Michelle talking about uh, laughing gas, boob power. It's like, it's like you're, and, not, you're not you know, helping. It's, it's, you got to help me out sometimes. You know, I'm trying to, you know, make this legitimate. And, That's you know, awesome. it's, I want to jump around the rug out from under me. It makes you wonder when, you, when you're watching, like, like, like the knockouts or the divas of, like, how many of these bad ideas are theirs? <laughs> you know, it, yeah, it's kind of. Exactly. I mean, maybe maybe it's not that WWE so down on the women and don't think they can do real stuff. Maybe it's just the women just think they're doing good with this. <laughs> you know, right. maybe they do need some guidance. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's tremendous. I mean, speaking of that, uh, Alan, what are your thoughts on the current TNA and WWE women's divisions? Uh, the, uh, you know, the knockouts and the divas. Back- the SmackDown part, that just seems to be kind of aimless these days. And mm-hmm. the only time we're going to see them is on superstars. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, I actually was, I didn't have high hopes for Kelly Kelly as champ, but I don't know. She's, she seems to be doing all right with it. I mean, they're only giving the girls May two and a half minutes. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. the intro, uh, their entrances combined is like longer than the match itself. Uh, TNA was doing really fantastic work with the knockouts until Hogan came along. And I think Hogan did a lot of good stuff for TNA, you know, with RVD coming in um, and, you know, bringing in some new people. But it seemed like the knockouts got pushed aside. They went through some weird flux. They're kind of back again with uh, with some kind of focus. Um, I, I thought their, their, their greatest um, parts were when they had a lot of the Shimmer Girls, like Alyssa Flash, um, you know, and of course, Madison Rain's still there. Um, but some of the other gals too, at um, you know, like Awesome Kong, for instance. And mm. uh, <laughs> so I don't know what happened. I, I really would like to see them come back to you know TNA was seemed to be a front and and their ratings were excellent. They sometimes um, they're always like in the top three of the show, and so I don't know why you would screw with that, but they did. And so so WWE. I don't want to give them like an ultimate fail, but you know, they, the only time that they seem to do when, when they're right about it is like when they have a women's match at WrestleMania, it just never seems to go up. Right. Uh, <laughs> outside of that, uh, Trish and Lita match, I think that was pretty excellent, but ever since it's like, Oh my God, you guys just, you, you work towards WrestleMania. You just fuck this up. Uh, every other time it's not so bad. Um, and TNA normally they got it together unless they're trying to. It's like they're purposely like, oh, they're getting a little too big. Let's yeah, yeah. Cut the time in half. Excellent. So. Uh, well, we need to get out of here. It is getting late here. I know. Uh, I know. LB has a ha- is going to turn into a pumpkin. That's true. I personally can't wait to see that. A very, a very sexy, <laughs> a very sensual pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell us uh, what's coming up for Rival Angels. Uh, are you going to be around at any cons? We should check you out at. I'll be at Wizard World Chicago and, uh, in August, so uh, a couple weeks, and then I'll be at Wizard World Mid Ohio at the very end of October. 
Excellent. Thank you very much. Go check them out at rivalangels.com. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. Uh, it's Thanks. been a, it's been a great series of comic book guys. And, and, and I love to do another one here in the future. It, 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 and, uh, you know, I think this is a new genre that's going to be just growing as you, you guys are obviously proven, uh, that it works. Damn straight. So, <laughs> well, thanks a lot, guys. We're going to go ahead and wrap here. Uh, again, if you want to check us out, uh, uh, hit us up with any comments or, or, or let us know anywhere else we need to talk to. Hit us up at what's that email, guys? Good times. Good times at wrestling mayhem show.com. Oh, whoa, whoa. 412 206 WMS 9670. If you want to drop us a uh, a voicemail, and we'll read the Google Voice with much pleasure. Uh, hit us up at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, Chachi's laughing off camera. Uh, Twitter, uh, at Mayhem Show. Of course, please check out the Mayhem Show Gold app. There's plenty of good stuff on there tonight, I'm sure. Did we sing tonight? I can't remember. I sang. You I sang, sang some stuff. I sang, sang that thing to um, AJ. <laughs> yeah, like, you sang that thing to me, and I also, uh, we had Monster Truck Voice. That's true. Excellent. So, AJ, for... <laughs> hey there, I guy. don't <laughs> want to hear you say that I want it that way. Tell, Tell me why. why. Ain't nothing but an AJ. Tell me why. <laughs> Ain't nothing but a VJ. <laughs> Tell me why. I never want to hear that. I, I want it that way. Because I want Bravo. it that way. Thanks, guys. It's a great encore for LB. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Nate's always good learn? to be in the studio. What did we learn? And Chachi and everybody. Oh, yeah. What did we learn? What, oh, we, crap, didn't we didn't learn, learn anything this week? <laughs> uh, I learned. Uh, I learned CM Punk. Yay. Chachi, what'd you learn? CM Punk. Yay. Uh, AJ, what'd you learn? CM Punk. Yay. Alan, what'd you learn? CM Punk. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John, what'd you learn? Uh, CM Punk mustache. Yay. Hey. And we out. We'll see you guys next week. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.